Hmm. Hey everyone, this is uh, Jeff Sanders with Jeff Sanders Films. I uh, feel like a Muppet, because, uh, yeah, I probably am one. Anyways, there you are. So, uh, yeah, this is Jeff with Jeff Sanders Films. Uh, hmm, I, uh, hope you sit through this whole, uh, thing, so, uh, and today we're going to be talking about a very new and exciting feature that was just added to the Pocket Cinema 4K camera, did I say that right? Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera, and that is Black Magic RAW. It's a very exciting new shooting format, and it's gonna, I think, help a lot of people out with what they, you know, with uh, what they do. I just talk like a normal person. I'm sorry, I'm not good at talking like a normal person. I don't, I don't usually do videos like this. I'm usually behind the camera, and uh, yeah, so sorry you have to deal with me. But this is a very exciting thing we're talking about today. It is Black Magic Raw. It's a really cool update that Black Magic just released with their cameras, and I think it's going to help a lot of uh, video shooters out there, uh, from all the way people that are doing films and uh, feature work, short films, enthusiasts, and I think it's actually really going to help out uh, even people doing weddings and uh, documentary work. I can see this helping out with a lot as well. So, yeah, let's uh, sit tight and we're going to run through some features. I'm going to show you some footage that I went out and shot. And i got to say that if somebody like this guy here can go out and get some okay results with it, well, you probably can too. Uh, it's basically just like, it's everything you get with a RAW file, but it's put in a movie file. And it's also smaller. So you can still control ISO, color, temperature, stuff like that. Everything that you could do with a RAW file, you can still do with this. But they're able to optimize the sensor and kind of compress it all down. And so the file sizes are actually really small and it's a lot more convenient to work with. Well, I mean, kind of. I mean, right now we're dealing with DaVinci Resolve is kind of the best place to use it, but you can use it in Premiere. And I am going to talk to you a little bit about that in a minute here. I found a plugin for Windows that works pretty well for it. So you really don't have to do as much of the transcoding or anything like that anymore. There are some limitations currently with it, but, you, you know, these things happen at first. But uh, the precedent is really good. And what you're going to be able to do down the line, I'm sure, is going to be really, really impressive. And I'm sure other camera companies and editing softwares are going to, you know, according act accordingly. I also did want to mention that this is opening up the possibility here for new memory cards. I'm really curious about ch uh, testing out those uh, Lexar 1000Xs. They're pretty cheap. You can get a 128 gig version of that for like 59 bucks or so currently, and that's a lot cheaper than the 200 that you're spending on the uh, V90 cards that are out right now. And if those can handle at least, you know, some of the lower compressions of this, this could be a really good thing. Uh, for you to use. I mean, if it could work even up to like 5.1. This is really a game-changing codec, and I think that uh, there's going to be a lot of shooters out there who the quality of their work is going to go up. It really is kind of magic. So, how do you get it on your new camera? Um, well, you just got to go update your firmware, and it's not real hard. You just got to go down to uh, Blackmagic's web page, and uh, you got to install Got to download their, their newest version of it. I think it's called Blackmagic Utility. I'll have some screen grabs from it here. And then you install that. It's going to ask you to, once you install that, you're going to open it up and then it's going to ask you to connect your camera. So I just used the cord that came with my uh, Samsung T5 500 solid state drive that I um, record with. It comes with this cord. So just take that. Uh, and I believe it's a 3.1 to USB. Uh, 3.0 and what you're just going to do um, is plug it into your computer and then plug it into your camera there uh, through the camera's 3.1 port and then into your computer's uh, USB port. What I heard is some people were having issues with downloading the last firmware with the 3.0 port and so I went in through the 2.0 port and yeah you might want to try that. Also I'm running Windows 10 by the way. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any issues with like Windows 8 or any of the other ones, but on Windows 10, I didn't have any issues here. 
So you're going to connect your camera, then after you've got that going, it's going to ask if you want to update that your firmware is out of date, and it's going to ask you if you want to update it. You're going to hit yes, and then it's going to update. Now give it a few minutes. It took about five minutes for me, and it kind of got stuck at around 70%. That's okay. Yeah, so don't freak out if that happens. Just kind of wait a few minutes, and uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine. Mine just kind of went from 70% all the way to like 100, shut down, and it said, you know, your camera's fine. Turned it off. My camera was good to go. Now, once you have your camera good to go, you can now go into the menu and you can now connect to Blackmagic RAW. Um, you're going to notice that Cine DNG is now gone. Uh, this is kind of bothering some people. I don't know, I really never use Cinema DNG because of the big file sizes and also you have to do lots of conversions and things like that. And Some people are going to not be happy that DNG is gone, but you never know, they might add it later. So nothing to freak out about. Anyways. What you're going to do is you're going to go in from that point and you can kind of choose uh, now these new options. You have Q0 on there now. Now Q0 and the 3 to 1 compression and that stuff, that's all supposed to be used for more high-end like effects work and stuff like that. So for me, it's, it's really not going to be needed. And Blackmagic says the that the constant quality compression under Q5 and the 5 to 1 compression should really do just fine for a uh, independent film work and just your normal film work. It, it's really high end. So I just put it on uh, on uh, Q5 and I put it under constant quality and my results were really good. So if you want to just still have small file sizes but have your quality still be up, that's, you know, that worked for me pretty well. I know on the Ursa 4.6 uh, Mini Pro that people were saying that even the 8 to 1 and 12 to 1 compression was doing pretty well. So that might be the same case and on the pocket 4k we're going to just try them all out here but the one that i went out and i shot with was uh just the q5 constant quality compression that worked pretty well so we're going to cut to some footage here that i went out and i shot uh about three minutes of it just went out and shot some stuff around town with my friend dane and uh anyways we're gonna do that and we'll get right back to it
Okay, well, as you can see, I mean, it came out pretty good. I'm not saying I did anything uh, to change the world or, or anything. And it just, it wasn't very hard. It was my first time shooting with the format. So, I mean, obviously there's some uh, room for error there. And it was also my first time using DaVinci Resolve. I mainly use Premiere. I'd done some tutorials and things like that. So I had a little bit of a knowledge and then I had some knowledge about Premiere. And so, you know, I was just kind of messing around, figuring stuff out, but even still I was able to get I think some pretty good footage out of it. And for those people who actually kind of know what they're doing, they're gonna do really well with it. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go through kind of the process of doing that because there actually was a few things that popped up uh, while I was trying to put the footage on that uh, was a little hang up and I don't want to hang you up. So I might as well talk about it for a second here. Okay, so when I was uploading the footage, I had, you know, a few issues happen putting it into Resolve. I had, uh, just the resolve that came with the camera, which is a 12 point, the 12 point version. Uh, it wasn't the latest version of it. And so I didn't recognize the pocket cinema cameras, uh, black magic raw files yet. So I just went ahead and I jumped on the black magic website and I downloaded the newest version of it. And after that, it worked fine. Also, obviously I couldn't use it in premiere, but as I was looking around today, I found out that there was a, site, and let me just make sure I got the name right here, Auto Chroma. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in checking it out. But after uh, downloading that, I was able to actually pull this footage into Premiere. Now this only works for Windows, so it, it may be coming for Mac later, or somebody else might figure it out for Mac. But for right now, Auto Chroma only works for Windows, but it did make it so I could pull things into Premiere. Uh, there's a free version of it and you know, I'm not an affiliate or anything like that. I'm not trying to sell you on it, but if you want the full version, it's $29. So it's not, you know, too bad really in the scheme of things, but you know, it seems to be a pretty cool thing, but yeah, only works for windows kind of sucks, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be things down the line that are, you know, we're so early on right now. I'm sure there's going to be things down the line. This isn't going to be too big of an issue. So basically once you have the footage into DaVinci though, this is all that I was doing. You can go in, you do just a little basic edit on the timeline there. And then after that, you just jump over to the color panel. And at first I didn't really know how to uh, get the raw utilities going, but then I, you know, you find, I found the tab and there's a default setting that you can keep it at. And that tends to work, you know, pretty well with what you set. But if you need to make some little minor adjustments, all you gotta do is you gotta change that to clip. So once you click clip, it'll change that. And you can then control all the parameters after that, change your ISO and your Kelvin and all that stuff. Highlight recovery is on there. Um, up and then after that, basically, I just added another node and go in. After I had the other node going, I, I just was able to go into the LUTs there in DaVinci, and they had just have some built-in film LUTs. And I was liking the way those were looking, so I was just putting those on. And after I found one that I kind of liked, I would just, you know, lower the highlights generally and bring those all back. And then that would kind of crush it out. And so I'd bring the shadows back up. But because there's so much information in there, you really can push and pull highlights quite a and uh, shadows quite a bit. And so I was able to do that and get really clean looking images that I was pushing and pulling and and doing that stuff too. And it was it's pretty impressive. Another thing that I added is, a, and some people have talked about it, is it's a little soft. And so I did some mid-tone or mid-detail sharpening, mid-tone sharpening, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but that is just gonna sharpen your mid-tones and that's gonna give you a really nice look there. And so just those little things I was doing to those clips, uh, I, you know, it, it only took me like a few minutes and once you have those going, like that's really all, that's really all I was doing. And so, yeah, if you're like a, having to do some big color work, you can do all that. But if you just need to do kind of some smaller stuff like I did and you wanna make your stuff look nice, that works just fine. So yeah, I really found myself having an easy time with the format. It worked, you know, really well. I think that, uh, you know, once I learn it a bit more and once, you know, if you're like me and you're just kind of still figuring stuff out, uh, I think there's just a, a lot of potential that's that's in this codec and that's in DaVinci Resolve itself. I mean, I'm sure most people already knew that, but 
you know, it's always a little intimidating learning some new software. So it's, it's good to know. And it's good to know that we can still get some good results, even with some limited knowledge here. And uh, that's important, you know, don't get intimidated by stuff too much because it, you know, there's so many things that will set you back from doing something from filmmaking or, you know, I don't, I don't know if I can do it or whatever. And it's, you know, sometimes it's good just to try. And so, yeah, don't, don't let yourself ever get like too discouraged with that. It doesn't seem to be too hard of a software. Blackmagic also released some really good tutorials uh, that were pretty comprehensive about using DaVinci Resolve. And uh, maybe I'll link those down below as well. If uh, you want to, if that's one of those things that you want to look into as well. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of updates with Premiere now that this is going, that's going to help out people with shooting in that format. It's kind of hard to know, but as of right now, you can still get a lot out of it just by doing these things. So yeah, very exciting stuff. Like I said, I, you know, with the footage I shot, it is what it is. I'm really excited to use it with some film work and to kind of go out and do some more with it. But just even with the uh, limited time of using it, I mean, I've used the Pocket just with ProRes files quite a bit already, and I'm just loving this new camera. I, I think it's probably the best bang for the buck you can get right now. Really, it's more than that. I, I really like what this camera is. It's so small compared to like a proper cinema camera. Or I hate the word proper, but compared to a cinema camera. Uh, it's so much smaller. So for me, it's a lot easier to use because sometimes I have a hard time lugging stuff around. Uh, I don't want to get into it too much, but I've had kind of, you know, I'm obviously I'm overweight. And so sometimes things are physically kind of hard for me to do. And that camera's really being nice to me as um, I use the GH5 a lot as well for the same reason. Um, that's what I'm recording this with right now, by the way. But with the new pocket camera, it's really with these file formats, with it being smaller, with it being just a really strong camera, I really uh, can't recommend it enough. It's a very exciting time right now for filmmakers. Uh, you know, you can buy things that, you know, this camera would have cost $50,000 if you jump back 10 years ago with what it can do. It's, you know, I mean, some of the stuff it can do didn't even exist back then, so it's even better than those cameras. It's really an exciting time. This is perfect for everyone. I, I, I mean, I know there's professionals out there like I could really can't, that say, you know, I really can't use this, you know, for everything I'm doing. But for those people who have to do things a bit more on a budget like me, it's really, a, it's really a great camera. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, if I can do it, you know, you, you can too. Some things are real physically, you know, hard for me to do being overweight, like I kind of mentioned before. And, you know, I've had actually had some health issues th this past year that made it even harder. And I was actually afraid I couldn't make movies anymore. But cameras like this, stuff like this, really make it easier. And, you can, you know, you make things work for you. So don't let things get you down if you're having a hard time with it. Or if you're worried about, you know, pulling the trigger on this camera, I hope this helped you a little bit on your... You know, giving you some more knowledge. I'm not saying buy it necessarily if you know, if you can't, but uh, if it's something that's within your budget and that it can work with you, I think it's, I think it's a really good value. And this new Blackmagic RAW format is, it's really, really cool. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's future-proofed pretty well. So for the next several years, I think this camera is going to be a hot ticket item. It already is right now. So uh, with it, you know, with the way that it is, you know, I don't want to talk you into anything, but I think a lot of people are going to be talking about Black Magic Raw, and so I think those sales are going to jump up a bunch again. So wait lists might get a little long, so you might want to jump on some of them. I have some links down below. Um, they're affiliate links. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but it helps me out a lot if you do. Uh, I'd appreciate it. So sincerely, thank you. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll be doing some more videos like this. So obviously this camera has a lot to offer, so there's a lot more there. I might do some more in-depth tutorials on it. There's also, yeah, there's just lots of film gear related stuff that I'm going to be doing on here. Also a lot of filmmaking things in general and film stuff and uh, interviews, stuff like that, that, that I'm able to do and just nice information to share. So yeah, please consider subscribing and liking and turning on those bell notifications so you get updated uh, whenever I put a video up. And yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, I truthfully appreciate it. And sorry you got me today. We're, we're trying our best, okay? Thank you. Take care. Muppets. Oh. 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 Oh.
Oh, oh, what are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, it looks kind of creepy in here. It's, uh, it's my mom's basement.